So today we have Eric Bender from University of Pittsburgh School of Dental Medicine. Eric, thanks for joining us today. I absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. So let's go ahead and get started. If you could give us a brief summary of your dental school journey. So where you're from, where you went to undergrad, what you majored in, and did you take a year off? All righty. So I'm from Wisconsin, little hand thing, make sure it's not backwards, but right in the middle smack there, about two hours northwest of Chicago, small town called Port Atkinson, Wisconsin. I went on to college at the University of Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota, four years there. I studied biochem and then also majored in or minored in business and management. Had a lot of fun with that and I highly recommend doing that. Afterwards, I jumped straight into dental school at Pitt Dental Medicine and I'm here now. Okay, awesome, awesome. So two questions. Did you do any type of like pre-dental programs at your school in order to like uh, increase your chances of getting in? So at the University of Minnesota itself when I was there for undergrad, I don't think it might have enhanced my, I don't know if it would enhance my way of getting into Pittsburgh or anything. I guess I could put on my resume that I was definitely checking it out. Mm -hmm. I did go to the ASDA stuff that was at Minnesota. So ASDA is the American Student Dental Association and they have a pre-dental chapter. You can sign up for that and they have some resources. I did that and then the Minnesota chapter would put on some events like you could practice waxing teeth or taking impressions on each other um, on some model casts and just kind of get a feel for what dental school is about. And then I was also involved in the pre-dental club at the University of Minnesota and I served as president for that which helped to uh, definitely get me to learn more about dental school in general and just the connections that I made through that but also just through the process and hearing all the speakers once a month we'd have meetings come in and people would come in to talk about different topics and how to be a competitive applicant. And the person who reviewed applications at the University of Minnesota would come and do a big speech on like what they look for. So that was super helpful. I did not apply to Minnesota, but had I done that, I think it definitely would have helped having that connection with the admissions person. And I mean, not to say all admissions think the same, but True. I'm sure there's some type of uh, general uh, you know, look that they're going for. So, okay, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. And so, you did well on the DAT, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. What is the number one tip, you know, that you would give a pre-dental student? Because everybody's looking for this, this golden answer of what to study or like what to do, um, which it's never going to come. You know, right. everybody has their own path. But what would you say in your experience helped you the most? I think for me, I'm not a big study person. I mean, obviously I need to study, but I'm <laughs> at it doing the scheduled study thing. So what I tried to do was I took it right after my sophomore year. Some people take it longer. I took it right in the summer after sophomore year, right after I finished OCHEM. And that definitely showed in my scores. On um, my OCHEM 2, I had like a 23, but on my like Chem 1 I had, or Biology 1 or whatever it was, I had like a 16. The okay. average worked out okay, but you could definitely tell the most recent classes were my stronger ones. So yeah. for me, that's what I did. I took it really close to the classes when it was fresh in my mind. Okay, okay. Yeah, we've actually had a couple of other students suggest that. Um, you know, going the untraditional way, I guess, because typically people take it around like third year. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, their junior year. So, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. And so, of course, did well in your DAT. Then you got the actual interview. So, can yeah. you kind of walk us through what your interview day was like? Sure. So, at Pittsburgh, uh, once you get the acceptance call or whatever, um, that's an exciting day, December 1st or after, whenever. It doesn't make a difference when you get the call. If you get it, you're in, and that's what matters. That's all that matters. But, uh, once I got that call, scheduled the interview, went over there, and I'm going backwards here. You get the call after you interview. Here I am, forgetting how that works. So anyways, I uh, got the call to go and interview, I guess that's the call. And when I was there, they basically gave us a tour of the school, and then they had us sit down, and they kind of, not lectured at us, but told us about the school, about how the programming works here, why Pitt's a little bit special here versus a different school, and we just kind of got more information. It was very informational for us. Their big focus was not to stress us out. It was just to get to know our personality a little bit. And I think if you get an interview at Pitt, you're already two thirds the way there toward getting in. I can't say numbers or confirm or say any word for the school, but it's definitely more of a, let's just uh, check your personality kind of thing. And you sit down with some faculty or staff, um, sometimes a student or a resident, and basically they have a rotation for my interview round. It was 15 minutes with each person and it was kind of like speed dating. You'd go around in a circle and the third one, we ate lunch with the person for 15 minutes, super casual. Nothing was a pointed question. They just wanted to get a feel for who you were. And I know some people may or may not have gotten in based on kind of the random assortment and that's out of your hands. Uh, sometimes you really click with someone and that's why they have you rotate through too. 
Um, you might be with an older professor who you just can't spark an interest with, and they're doing these every week too. So if they're not su feeling super interested, uh, don't be worried about it. It's a long process for them every week to be interviewing these candidates as well. But just be yourself, and it's very casual. Right. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And so uh, I want to ask you a little, um, a little quick question. Why or what about Pitt attracted you versus the other schools that you interviewed at? Okay. So when I was applying to schools, I was at Minnesota. My story is a little different, and everyone has their own path. Mm -hmm. But I went to Wisconsin. I grew up in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Went to school in Minnesota. And being four years in Minnesota, I wanted to change up my scenery. I didn't want to do eight years in the same spot. I just wanted to travel and go to a new spot. So I didn't apply to Minnesota. Um, I'm from Wisconsin and Marquette's in Wisconsin. I could have went there and I did apply an interview there, but that was a little close to my parents. I wanted to kind of get out and check out a different part of the country, get out of the Midwest a little bit. So it kind of came down to, I was looking at Michigan and I was looking at Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh has very competitive out of state tuition. So that was pretty on par with Marquette for me. And for being to go somewhere different, that was an attraction for me. As far as Pittsburgh itself, I know they say don't pick a place by its location, and I don't necessarily recommend doing this, but for me, that was something I was considering. Dental schools definitely have their differences. Uh, there's the class size to consider. I like the bit smaller of a class size. I like that it was not quite far east coast, too much of a culture shock for me in the Midwest. Right, right, right. Somewhere in between. Uh, but other than that, I think uh, just kind of pick a school that it, tuition makes sense for you and is it within your budget. And then also that it just seems like a good fit when you interview there. I think that's a really good way to kind of get a feel for the school. Right. Okay. But one more addition just to that. Don't be alarmed if uh, you get a weird vibe from some of the people in the interview, this or that. I think it's hard to get a perfect grasp of what a school is like in a single moment because it's all relative to who's there that day and who you talk to. Right. I completely agree. Because yeah, there's there's a there's a whole not board, but the whole team who do who does the interviews. And so you really, like you said, might get somebody who you don't necessarily click with as much as you would somebody else on the team. So mm -hmm. I think that's a great piece of advice. You can't kind yeah. of take everything at surface value. Yeah, great. Definitely. And so you chose Pitt. So how was it your first year? Like, how was uh, the class load? Um, did you all have any type of clinical experience? Just how was your overall experience? Sure. At Pittsburgh, again, a lot of schools have very similar curriculum. They're all trying to get you to graduate out the door in four, sometimes three years. And uh, for the first year, it's all your didactic work. It's all the books, sitting in lecture, learning a lot of the basic sciences the first semester, then jumping into a little bit more advanced science. I don't know, a little bit more relevant, doing the head and neck anatomy, doing the dissection on the cadavers, stuff like that. We do start with lab work early on our first fall semester. We do some waxing and then we start doing our drilling and do our first amalgam fillings, our first silver fillings and tooth color fillings and practicing our first fillings in spring. Um, apart from that, not too much lab work the first year. That kind of comes in the second year. But it's definitely busy. It's a lot of, it's a change. I wouldn't say any of our classes were harder than undergrad. It was just that there's a lot more of them and you have to learn to manage your time. And you're exactly. hearing that time and time again from everybody. Exactly, exactly. And so uh, what about the opportunity to like assist within the actual clinic? Did y'all have that or? So we had rotations. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, we have rotations through the different clinical areas about, I don't know, once a month, maybe we'd go through and rotate and we'd assist a third or fourth year, get a feel for kind of how clinic feels like, start to ask questions and get assimilated to that just a little bit earlier see what Axiom is, know it exists, it's out there, something to learn in the future, don't worry about what that is now, right, right. <laughs> our, our health record electronic computer program that we all use. So a little bit of exposure here and there, but it wasn't until after our first year, that's in that summer we do cleanings and profies on each other, okay. so then we get some clinical experience there, and then second year, um, starting spring semester, actually they started fall semester this year, you go through the clinic and you will work with a fourth year to do like a really easy tiny filling, or something like that to get your hands on a real patient. Um, of course, this is all after you finished all your preclinical lab work. Doing so you've learned to do it on plastic teeth. Now you can get to try it on a real patient. So, okay, yeah. awesome, awesome. And so I asked this question of all the uh, students at the different schools: What makes Pitt unique? You know, if you were to choose one thing to really, you know, signify the individuality of each of your school individually, sure. what would you say makes Pitt? Pit. I'd say one thing. Can't say two. 
if I had to say one thing. You can say two. You can say two. Okay. two uh, if I had to say one, and this is my experience, which is different than other people. But one thing is we have a very, I think, robust digital dentistry program at school. Uh, very early on, one of the prosthodontists at our school brought in the CEREC machines. And we have, it's the older generation CEREC machine. They have about 20 of them that we all practice on preclinically and learn how to scan our crown preps and do all that. And then in clinic, we get to do a 3D CAD CAM milled crown, which is pretty cool. Um, we're allowed to do that. And there's actually a requirement now. I think they're bumping it up to three CAD CAM crowns. is like a minimum before you graduate. So you have to do that at Pitt. Some schools don't have that yet. Other schools, a lot of them are moving there. So I wouldn't say this is totally differentiating. But one thing that they have mentioned to us this year, and I can't say for certain, but they're working on bringing um, a 3D printer to start doing some 3D uh, printed dentures and to do some scans to start the denture process and the digital part of that. So I think we're pretty on top of a lot of the digital things, which is pretty cool. And then that other thing I just want to pitch is at Pittsburgh as a whole, the university, there's a lot of kind of hype around entrepreneurship, which is pretty cool. Um, me, myself, I've done some different stuff here and there. And at the campus level, they have these different health sciences, um, what's the word I'm looking for, incubators yep. and hackathons. Awesome. And they connect you with everybody. And then you can do these different things with med students or anybody that's in kind of a health profession to work on a health-related startup. The dental school doesn't necessarily push it. But if you want to do that and you're involved in it, there's a lot of ways you can make time to do that, which I think is a pretty cool resource to have just across the street. That's amazing. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, as we get more and more exposed to, to technology, you know, I think more and more people are, are creating an interest or finding an interest mm -hmm. within entrepreneurship. So the fact that the school kind of, you know, uh, shines a light on that is amazing. So that's yeah, awesome. really cool. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the last question of the interview. Sure. If you could go and speak to your younger self mm -hmm. while you were going through the application process, what's one thing that you would say? Through the application process, like the month and stuff proceeding or kind of like as a pre-dent working up to build up my... You know, let's do as a pre-dent working up, uh, getting ready for the actual application to open. Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, working up just kind of in a couple of years as I'm, I'm thinking about how I want to be a competitive applicant. I would go back and say, do something that interests you and stick to that. Everybody is, you're going to hear this again from other dental students, but everybody does biology or that as a major, they do the sciences, they do research. Uh, for me, one thing is I was never interested in doing research further. I did biochem as a, a major and I got a lot of that through my lab work and that just wasn't for me, other people it is. So I felt that I didn't want to do that. And I did some other stuff. I got interested and involved in other um, stuff on campus and I think that was something follow your passion it'll stand out as something unique yeah. my fourth year after um, after I got into dental school and I knew I was going to Pittsburgh me and another friend who was also pre-dental we started a company doing line striping of parking lots and just kind of did a little entrepreneurship startup thing and did that for a summer and it was super fun I learned more about business than I did in my business minor and so far in dental school basically in that one summer had I done that before my application cycle, which I was kind of scared to jump out and do, I felt like I had to have a medical related job. Um, I think that really would have stood out in my application as something positive. So just kind of go for your dream and explore different areas. Uh, don't be scared to stick to the constraints of science pre-dental, however that stereotype goes. Right. I like that. That was good. That was a good one. I, yeah. I, that was a good one. That was a good one. Eric, thank you so much for uh, giving us your time today. I know, you know, there's a lot going on in the world, uh, mm -hmm. but we do definitely appreciate that you are here with us. Um, if anybody, any of our viewers want to reach out and, you know, ask you any questions, what's the best way that they can contact you? Sure. Uh, I'm on Instagram, ericbender94, and I'll be that at least for another year before I get somewhere else as a, a DMD degree at the end of that. I'll probably change it to ericbenderdmd, but ericbender94 on Instagram, and then in my bio, I have a link to my website, ericbenderdmd.com which has a little contact me button on the bottom if you want to email me directly or just DM me on Instagram. That's perfect. I love helping out anybody with anything I can. So please reach out. I'm more than happy to send you anything or help you out with stuff. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you again, Eric. We really do appreciate it. Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate it. Everybody, um, if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. If you have any questions for Future DDS, you can head over to our Instagram at underscore Future DDS. Shoot us a DM and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But until next time, see y'all later.